to start out, um, let's look at how women currently consume fashion. Uh, I started 99 Dresses a couple of years ago when I was 18, and I'm now 21, so I am the baby on this panel of speakers. Um, so just keep in mind when I'm talking about the way women consume fashion, I'm talking on behalf of my demographic of uh, young, fun, social, cash-strapped Generation Y girls. So let's start out with a question. Uh, raise your hand if you have ever said or have heard a woman say, I have a closet full of clothes but nothing to wear. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a huge problem for women because how we usually wear our fashion follows a Pareto principle in that we wear 80% of our clothes just 20% of the time, which means we rarely or never wear the majority of the stuff that we spend so much money on. Why is it that... Um, why is it that I can go into Zara one weekend and I'll spend $500 on brand new clothes and I get really excited and I bring them home and I try them all on and then I wear them for like a week and then a week later I'm like, uh, I'm bored. I put them in the back of my closet and I'm like, ooh, I want to go buy something new. And like, why is it that that happens? Fashion is becoming increasingly transient and cheaper. I buy something, I wear it, I get bored of it, and then I want to go buy something new and shiny again, and I want it now. When I buy a dress, um, I don't want to buy the dress, I buy the experience that dress gives me. I want the feeling of getting the dress in the mail or bringing it home from the store. I want the excitement and rush of excitement I get from having something new to wear. And I want the compliments I get from my girlfriends, and I want the photos and memories of me wearing that dress out and about and having fun rather than ownership of the actual dress itself. And with more and more women posting photos of them um, wearing their fashion out and about on uh, social media sites like Facebook and Instagram, young women are becoming more and more conscious about not being seen in the same outfit over and over again. So the bottom line is we want everything. But how do we get everything if we've got limited resources, especially the obvious one being money? Well, traditionally, women would swap and borrow clothes from their girlfriends. And they do this in an offline manner. And I do this all the time with my sister, whom I live with in Sydney. Um, and also, I went to an all-girls Sydney boarding school, and there was a very common activity amongst all the girls there. The web is creating hyper-connectivity between people. So we can take what's been traditionally an offline activity organized in an ad hoc manner, and we can go and um, formalize it and turn it into something that has a lot and a lot of scale. And this doesn't just apply to the fashion industry. Collaborative consumption, which is this growing trend of sharing resources, is massively disrupting industries as we speak. So Airbnb.com is a great example of this, and it's just one of many. So by allowing uh, ordinary people such as you and me to rent out our spare room, um, our bed, or even our entire apartment to travelers, Airbnb has reached a valuation in excess of $1 billion and booked over 10 million guest nights on their platform in the space of a few years. So if you think about it, that's 10 million nights that would otherwise have been uh, spent in a hotel. So that's massively disruptive to the hotel industry. Um, oh. So we'll, we'll have a look at how fashion, uh, well now we'll have a look at how fashion um, collaborative consumption applies to the fashion space. So we'll start out with uh, one model, which is the rental model. So Rent the Runway is probably the best example of this. They allow women to rent designer dresses um, that normally retail for about $400 to well over $2,000. And you can rent them for special occasions. So you pay about 10% of the retail cost, uh, they ship the dress to you, you wear it to your special occasion, and then you ship it back to them. Um, so this is perfect for higher end designer dresses that you wear for special occasions because ordinarily what do you do? You have a special occasion, you go out to the store, you spend two, three, four hundred dollars on a dress that you only end up wearing once. Renting is much more cost effective for the consumer and it's a more efficient use of physical resources as well. 
And you'll also notice that the consumer doesn't care about um, ownership of the dress. She only cares about the experience that she has in the dress at her special event. And Rent the Runway is creating that Cinderella experience for her. The second type of collaborative consumption model is redistribution, which is basically means um, markets for reselling products. So 99 Dresses is an example of that. Um, when I was 18, I looked at my wardrobe and I'm like, I do not wear the majority of this stuff. It's perfectly good. I'd spent thousands of dollars on all these clothes and I was frustrated. And so I'm like, I had this idea. I thought it would be cool if we combine the unwanted fashion owned by millions of women into a giant infinite closet. So women can upload their unwanted clothes into this infinite closet and sell them to other girls for a virtual currency called buttons. And then they can spend those buttons on anything they want in the infinite closet. The idea being that you could buy something, wear it once or twice, and then just pass it on to someone else and go get something new. So I had this idea, I put it on a Facebook page um, and uh, just to see if anyone else thought it was cool. And it spread like wildfire throughout Australia. So I had thousands of fans of this non-existent product. And <laughs> that's how 99 Dresses got started. So women want a solution to this problem. And I'll tell you, like, the real challenge is providing them with that solution that's fast, easy, and completely frictionless for them. So, We'll just go through um, some of the advantages of collaborative consumption in the fashion space. So we're in making um, more efficient use of resources by creating a system where an item is being worn perpetually by a variety of different people rather than being worn on the odd occasion by an individual person. So that's more efficient use of resources, which creates um, a more effective, uh, sorry, more cost-effective uh, solution for wearing fashion. So if you were to go out and buy a dress for $500 and wear it once to a party and then you can't be seen in it again, so it just sits in your wardrobe, that dress is $500 per use. But if you take that $500 dress and, and it can be worn by 10 different girls to 10 different parties, suddenly it becomes $50 per use. So it's much more cost effective. It's also more environmentally friendly for obvious reasons because we're sharing resources, so we need to consume less of them. And also we get more choice. So if you combine uh, fashion collections with lots of other girls, you have more clothes to choose from. You could theoretically wear a new outfit every day. So to wrap up, I thought I'd just share with you my vision of how I see the future of fashion consumption. I envision a world where if you want to buy a new dress from your favorite online fashion retailer, you have the option of purchasing that dress brand new from the retailer or pre-loved from another woman. You receive the dress and you can wear it. You might wear it to a first date, to a party, maybe to work, but when you get bored of it, you can just pass it on in a click by reselling it. You get a prepaid, pre-addressed uh, mailer that you put the item in and send it off. So that's the frictionless part of it. You've got to make distribution really, really easy and that's a big challenge. And then you receive credit that you can go and spend on anything else. And you can do this every day. Imagine guilt-free shopping every single day. It's every woman's fantasy. So thanks very much for listening to me today. This is my email address. Um,